Good morning, everybody. Thanks so much to the AIS for inviting us to present this morning. We're really excited to share this innovative technology with you. My name is Heather Brennan, and I am the Vice President of the Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery Division at MTF Biologics. MTF Biologics is a human tissue bank. We process and distribute donated human tissue, uh, and we do so in, uh, we've been doing that for 30 years, and we do so more than anyone else in the world. Uh, we have spent the last 32 years primarily distributing uh, significant numbers of allografts into the orthopedic community. We've just uh, more recently, over the last five or six years, spread our wings into the plastic and reconstructive surgery community, and we are uh, very new in the aesthetic community, so uh, we're very excited to be here. As mentioned, we process and distribute more human tissue allografts than anyone else in the world, and every minute of every day, someone is receiving an MTF biologic solution. In 2013, we set forth to uh, essentially implement a plastic surgery arm of the foundation of, the, of MTF Biologics. And so here's what we do in plastic and reconstructive surgery. We launched a, a very innovative, unique uh, acellular dermal matrix called Flex HD Pliable, primarily used in post-mastectomy breast reconstruction. And much more recently, and with the help of our advisors, we recognize that the regenerative capacity of the biologics we work on in human tissue and what we develop has um, a significant implication in aesthetic medicine as well. And so we now have broadened our portfolio to include some other tissue forms and products. Profile is a uh, costal cartilage graft for uh, rhinoplasty and nose reshaping. Uh, Mesobiomatrix is a xenograft uh, used in aesthetic applications. We have a fat transfer system. But I'm here to talk to you about Renuva, which is an injectable, very exciting biostimulatory matrix. So in a nutshell, Renuva is a, uh, an off-the-shelf alternative to small volume fat transfer, autologous fat transfer. Essentially, we take adipose fat that is donated, we remove the cells, we remove the oil, and it renders us with this adipose-derived extracellular matrix that's rich in matrix proteins and factors, very consistent if not identical to what we've done for decades with other tissue forms like bone and dermis. And so this particular matrix, if we can retain the matrix proteins, it will become a, a signaling center to bring in other cells and essentially and hopefully allow the host to create its own fat into the matrix. So as any good technology, we started in mice, and so we injected uh, the extracellular matrix from the adipose into the subcutaneous space in these mice, and as you can see, 12 weeks later, now remember, we're injecting only matrix, no cells. 12 weeks later, what we find, and I think I have a pointer here, so let me see if I can manage this. 12 weeks later, what we find is robust infiltration of cells from the periphery that are entering into the matrix, differentiating into adipocytes, and forming healthy fat. So you can see here, if I'm able to make this happen, yes. So you can see here, uh, very healthy vascular channels. This is all uh, mouse fat, and we confirmed that by staining with perilipin specific to metabolically active mouse adipocytes. So we know that the host is actually infiltrating and remodeling this matrix. Basically, this mouse is creating its own fat into the matrix. So that got us really excited. It got our advisors, academic and surgeon advisors, very excited as well. So we started somewhere. We had to start somewhere in humans. And so we did a safety study in the dorsum of the wrist. And we injected up to about 5 and a half cc's. These patients did very well. Again, we demonstrated through biopsy. And uh, you'll kind of have to trust me on this. This is a little bit of a, um, a, a wonky slide here. But uh, the, this brown staining here represents uh, human perilipin for metabolically active human cells. So uh, in theory, these cells are infiltrating again into the matrix, and these patients are forming their own fat. Now, this is uh, the next study that we did in collaboration with UPMC. And what we did here was challenge the matrix just a little bit more. And so we took... Uh, larger volumes, 20 cc volumes in six different sites. We injected them into the panis of abdominoplasty patients, which allowed us a little more visibility, timeline in histologic progression. And so what we found, and I would say that if you remember, excuse me, wrong button. If you remember nothing else today, remember this slide. At three months, we found, again, consistent with what we're seeing in the mouse and in the hand, 
Uh, we found penetration. This is the slight penetration into this uh, dead matrix, if you will, not a it's acellular matrix. Uh, adipogenesis is happening around the periphery. There is an initial peripheral capsule, not really necessarily unexpected, would be expected at this time frame. And then at six months, you can see that uh, the capsule is essentially dissipated. The entire bolus is, is infiltrated with new fat and we've regenerated that complete bolus with fat. Now this gets us really excited when we start talking about the potential for larger volumes and, and incorporation. This is something that autologous fat cannot do because of the live nature of autologous fat. Those cells at the center, we all know this by principles of fat grafting, the cells at the center would, would die. So we moved into the face. We've done some small pilot studies in the face. We did a temple atrophy study, and we found that these patients uh, uh, tolerated Renuva very well. Uh, we were able to achieve correction. We found adipogenesis in, in biopsy, again, suggesting the patient is making their own fat, and we found volume retention up to six months. Uh, there's a lot going on behind the scenes here, but I'll, sh I'll share this one with you as well. We have an ongoing study right now, multi-center, again, a smaller pilot study to um, evaluate the effects of Renuva and age-related volume deficit in the face. So that six-month date is being evaluated right now. Enrollment's complete. Uh, so we're excited to bring that to you, hopefully, uh, here shortly. So in summary, we've done some really exciting work with this product, which actually is today commercially available. You can come talk to us outside. Uh, we have a small booth. We've demonstrated Renuva is safe and well tolerated. It stimulates fat, so I can inject it into you and you will create your own fat. It maintains volume correction, at least in temple study, up to six months. We obviously recognize that we need longer term data and that's happening. Um, so I'll leave you with this. I think this is just the beginning. We see this as a technology that can essentially be a platform technology. I think there's a lot of implications here and a lot of uh, exciting opportunities for this biostimulatory agent. So thanks very much.